Hello, my name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. This video is a high-level overview of the capabilities of the Security Onion 2.4 platform, followed by a demonstration of what it's like to investigate a potential incident using the built-in tools. We'll talk a little bit about the history of the platform, the data that it can handle, deployment options for your environment, and the suite of tools that are included for analysts to use to quickly and easily dig through mountains of data and see what's happening on a network. Let's get started. This quote from our documentation sums up the current state of Security Onion. It's a free and open platform built by defenders for defenders. But where did it come from? Security Onion was started as a project by our founder Doug Burks back in 2008. He wanted to take all the best open source projects for network defense and bundle them together in a single pre-configured platform to allow analysts to easily peel back the layers of their network and detect potential intruders. Over the last 15 years, different individual components of Security Onion have come and gone, some being supplanted by other open source projects and some being written from the ground up to be part of Security Onion. But that same goal remains to produce a free platform for threat hunting and security monitoring that can help shift the advantage away from the attackers to the people defending a network. This very simple sample architecture shows how a Security Onion deployment might look in a small enterprise. As you can see, we have an adversary out on the internet attempting to attack our network. To help us detect these malicious activities, we've got a Security Onion server set up in the data center, ingesting data from a few different sources. There's a tap inside the firewall that's sending north-south traffic, the stuff to and from the internet, into Security Onion for analysis. There's another east-west tap set up so that we can see traffic between nodes on our internal network, like workstation to server, or even workstation to workstation, to help spot lateral movement or other evidence of internal compromise. And finally, since so much network traffic these days is encrypted, we can supplement those logs with endpoint logs from our servers and workstations, as well as other logs from network equipment and cloud services. This architecture gives us deep visibility into everything happening in the environment for alerting and investigation purposes. So what does Security Onion do with the traffic it observes from those north, south, and east, west taps? Well, it's evaluated in a few different ways. First off, Security Onion includes a signature-based intrusion detection system that watches that live traffic and compares it against a list of tens of thousands of alerting rules. Any matches will cause an alert to fire, which can then be reviewed by an analyst to determine whether it's something that merits further investigation. By default, the platform ships with the Emerging Threats Open Rule Set. If you have a subscription for another rule set, like Emerging Threat Pro or Talos, or if you have custom detection rules that you've written yourself, it's simple to use those instead. And there's plenty of flexibility for tuning rules to your environment to eliminate false positives and reduce analyst fatigue. Second, network metadata is generated and stored for every network flow that Security Onion sees. At a minimum, this includes basic NetFlow style data like source and destination IPs and ports. But for common application protocols, this also records metadata about those exchanges like DNS query results, SSL certificate common names, or HTTP user agents. And this also includes a number of ICS and SCADA protocols, if you have that sort of traffic in your environment. Finally, Security Onion includes full packet capture, recording every byte of that tap traffic for later retrieval. The included tools can retrieve this recorded traffic from a single flow to everything from a particular IP or subnet and it can be reviewed directly in the web console or exported to tools like Wireshark, Network Miner, or anything else that can read industry standard PCAP files. In order to provide additional visibility and investigation context, Security Onion can also ingest and parse a variety of different log files. If you have Windows endpoints in your environment, which most enterprises do, Windows event logs are natively recognized and parsed when forwarded into a Security Onion environment. This includes both the built-in application system and security event logs, as well as logs generated by tools like Sysmon. And because our ingestion pipelines calculate and append a community ID, a hash that designates a particular network flow, you can pivot back and forth between Sysmon endpoint events 
and the traffic that they generated on the network. Additionally, logs can be ingested and parsed from a variety of network equipment, from vendors like Cisco, Palo Alto, and Fortinet, among others. This is a great solution for smaller offices or remote locations that may not merit a full Security Onion sensor deployment, but where you would still like to have some NetFlow or firewall logs to keep tabs on what the endpoints are doing there. Many third-party software packages also produce logs that we can accept and parse. Endpoint protection products, in particular, offer a lot of insight into what's happening on the local system, and can often be easily integrated into the Security Onion deployment for review. Finally, many cloud services have logs that can be retrieved and parsed by Security Onion. If you've got an AWS deployment, and you're looking for an easier way to review CloudTrail logs, we can help. There's also support for Google Workspace, Azure, Office 365, Okta, and many other cloud services. Whether it comes from live network traffic inspection or from log files, once all of this data is stored in Security Onion, how do analysts work with it? The tools we've developed as part of our Security Onion console, or SOC, are designed to make it as easy as possible to cut, stack, rearrange, and review the available information to uncover any problematic activity on your network. We'll look at these tools during the demonstration, but I wanted to give you a little background on them here as well. Our alerts panel is a central clearinghouse for all of the alerts that are generated by the various subsystems of Security Onion. If some piece of network traffic matches an IDS signature, it will be flagged and listed here, as will potentially malicious files that match a Yara rule or alerts about file integrity monitoring on an endpoint. Essentially, anything exhibiting known bad behavior will raise a flag and will appear in alerts, which serves as a queue of sorts for the security team to work through. Dashboards are our visualization mechanism for building graphs out of the data that's been collected in Security Onion. In many cases, converting a table of search results into a pie graph or a Sankey diagram makes it much easier to spot anomalies or strange patterns. Security Onion ships with dozens of example dashboards covering many different protocols and datasets, but this is also fully customizable if you'd like to add your own. The Hunt interface is designed around a single goal, speedy, flexible investigation. This is the primary interface we'll be using to peel apart all the layers of data and figure out what's happening in our demo environment. We can look up, pivot on, correlate, stack, and count anything that Security Onion knows about, and also move easily from a hunt into a packet capture or a third-party service like VirusTotal. Cases is our case management tool for recording notes and information about an investigation. But unlike most case management apps, it's not just a help desk ticketing system with some security buzzwords added as window dressing. It's actually designed to be an integral part of the investigation workflow. Relevant evidence can be sent to a case straight from the hunt interface, and then the case interface can be used to launch new hunts for observables like file hashes or IP addresses. We think it's pretty great. Playbook is a web-based tool for detection engineering, so that you can create alerting rules for indicators of compromise specific to your environment. By default, it's preloaded with the Windows rules from the Community Sigma repository but it's easy to pull in community rules for other platforms such as Linux or Mac OS, or to write and deploy your own rules. Finally, CyberChef is a great open source project that provides a web interface for manipulating, encoding, and decoding data. And we like it so much that we not only include it with the platform, but we integrated it as a pivot point from Hunt and PCAP to make things as quick and easy as possible for analysts. If you'd like to install Security Onion, there are several different paths you can take. The simplest, especially if you're just evaluating the platform for the first time, is to download the install ISO from our website and install it on the hardware or virtual machine of your choice. This will guide you through the install process and give you a working deployment with a minimum of fuss. Please note that you'll need hardware with a 64-bit Intel or AMD processor. It won't run on a Raspberry Pi or any other ARM-based machine. For more details on the required hardware, check the documentation on our website for a full list of minimum specs. Another option is to do a network installation on top of an existing Linux distribution. Because Security Onion's internal architecture is a set of containers, it is possible to download and install them on top of an already configured server. Again, 
check our documentation for details on which versions of Linux are supported for this installation mode. If you'd like to use Security Onion in the cloud, we have virtual appliances available in multiple major cloud computing environments. This can make installation much faster, but there are some cloud-specific wrinkles in the installation process that you should be aware of. Check our documentation for details. Finally, we also sell a variety of hardware appliances with Security Onion pre-installed. This is the easiest way to set up a production deployment, as the hardware is already vetted and certified to handle your specific use cases. If you'd be interested in this option, there's material available on our website at securityonion.com slash hardware. Security Onion can be deployed in several different architectures depending on your needs. If you're just getting your feet wet with Security Onion and want to try it out, a great place to start is with an import node. As the name suggests, an import node doesn't monitor live network traffic. Rather, it lets you import PCAP or EVTX files and analyze them to generate the same alerts and metadata that you would see if it had been live network traffic. Even if you have a full Security Onion deployment available, it can be helpful to keep an import node installation handy for ad hoc analysis of PCAPs generated by firewalls or other network equipment. The most basic deployment model for analyzing live traffic is a standalone node, where all of the Security Onion components are running on the same server. This works really well for simple deployments, like a home network or a small business environment, where all of the network traffic is at a single physical site. If you're dealing with a more complicated environment, though, a fully distributed deployment might be a better match. In a distributed deployment, the different functions of Security Onion are broken out among multiple servers. There's a manager node, which hosts the web console and the configuration settings for the grid as a whole. And then there are minion nodes performing specialized functions. Forward nodes listen to live network traffic. Search nodes work together to record that data in Elasticsearch. And there are other special purpose nodes that might be useful to you, depending on the particulars of your environment. Please check our documentation for more details. An important thing to remember is that the analyst interface the Security Onion console, is the same no matter what the underlying deployment model looks like, so you can engineer the solution that's the best fit for your environment without impacting your analysts and their workflows. Now that you're a little more familiar with the Security Onion platform and its capabilities, it's time for a brief demonstration. Everything that I'm going to show you here is standard out-of-the-box functionality. The deployment is a simple one, monitoring the internal traffic on a network and ingesting Windows events, including Sysmon, from the endpoints. We're going to walk through the Security Onion console interface and look at the analyst tools, and then perform an alert-driven investigation workflow to show how these tools actually function in practice. Let's get started. Let's begin by logging into the Security Onion console, or SOC. I'm logging in with a username and password. But in our 2.4 release, we also added the ability to authenticate using security keys for passwordless login, if that's preferred in your environment. Also, just a note, I'm using the Security Onion desktop for this demonstration. That's a Linux-based workstation image that can be easily installed from the same Security Onion ISO as the platform itself. As you can see, the different components of the Security Onion platform are listed along the left-hand side of the browser window. We're currently looking at the default overview screen, which can be easily customized if you would like to present different text or links to analysts when they log into the console. Let's take a moment to walk through the different tools that are available from this menu. The Alerts console is a clearinghouse for the alerts generated by the various components in Security Onion. Anytime a detection rule fires, it will generate an alert on this page. The intent is that it will serve as a queue of potentially malicious events for your analysts to work through. We will return to this interface shortly to investigate an alert and demonstrate the capabilities of the platform. Dashboards are a visualization component built into Security Onion to allow analysts to easily generate graphs and charts from the log data in the platform. There are several dashboards already built in that correspond to different log types or network protocols, with helpful visualizations already configured and ready to go. These are all fully customizable as well, so if you'd like to add a custom dashboard for your environment, it's just a matter of writing the queries and then it will be accessible to everyone. For example, if we want visualizations related to the HTTP traffic on our network, 
we can just click the drop down here and select the HTTP dashboard. You'll see here we've got a bunch of information about the HTTP sessions observed in this environment, including things like source and destination IPs, user agents, virtual hosts, and so on. Now, all of these tables and graphs are fully interactive. So if I want to do something like exclude traffic on port 80 and only see HTTP sessions on non-standard ports, that's easy to do. I can just click on 80 and exclude, and all of these visualizations will update to exclude that data. Now I see I've got a BitTorrent user agent here, so I can just click include on that to add it to my query and see only non-port 80 HTTP traffic from an endpoint that identifies itself as a BitTorrent client. Here we have all the data about traffic from that client, which virtual hosts it contacts, which HTTP request methods, which URIs, which ports. This tool allows the analyst to drill into the data gathered by the platform with maximum speed and flexibility, looking for potential threats. The next tool is Hunt. Like dashboards, Hunt is designed to provide the analyst with a fast, flexible interface to analyze and investigate data. We can get a summary view of all the data types collected by the platform. Here you see the logs sorted by their source module and the data type that they contain. And some of the different data types also have pre-configured queries, like connections. Here you see all the different protocols identified by the Zeek metadata parsers grouped together with their destination ports. This is a great place to start a threat hunt. Looking for client data traveling on non-standard ports is a good way to find misconfigured or malicious traffic. If we want to once again see all of the HTTP traffic and what ports it's on, we just need to click Include to add HTTP to our query, and we'll all be presented in this table. As you can see, we've got HTTP traffic on port 80, but we also have it on ports 443, 2869, 8082, and more. There may well be something there worth investigating, and we were able to find these outliers in a mountain of data with just a couple of clicks in the Hunt tool. There is a lot of functionality in Hunt, and we'll explore it more in a few minutes when we investigate and alert in the console. The next tool is Cases. This is a case management tool that's built into the platform for analysts to record notes and evidence during an investigation. It's designed to not only be a documentation platform, but also an integrated part of the workflow to pivot out of for future hunts. We'll explore this one more shortly as well. Next is PCAP. By default, Security Onion records all of the network traffic that it sees and makes it available through this web interface for later retrieval. This is, of course, tunable if there are certain ports, IPs, or subnets that you would prefer to ignore. During our investigation, we will see how individual network flows can be retrieved. This interface allows for retrieving larger PCAP samples. For example, if you want all of the traffic from a particular host, or all of the traffic on a particular port, you can make a manual request through this tool and then either view it in the web console or download it as a standard packet capture file to review in another tool. The grid screen is a summary of the Security Onion deployment and all of its nodes. This demonstration deployment is very simple, just a single standalone node running 2.4.20. If I expand by clicking on the caret, you'll see there's much more information available including the status and uptime of the various components on this node, a link to ingest arbitrary PCAP or EVTX files for analysis, and a link to the InfluxDB operational monitoring dashboard for this server. And if you're running Security Onion appliances, there's a photo here on the right-hand side of the front and back panels to reference when describing cabling or hardware requests to your data center engineers. The Downloads page includes Elastic Agent installers for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux endpoints. These are pre-configured for your particular Security Onion grid, so installing the agent is all that's necessary to start collecting logs from the machines on your network. The agent includes OS query functionality for live investigation of endpoints, as well as many integrations for ingesting logs from other equipment and services. If you'd like to collect logs from machines that are not on your local network, like remote user laptops, that can be done with a fleet node in your DMZ. See our documentation for details. 
Finally, the administration menu allows you to configure every aspect of the Security Onion grid. In earlier versions, it was sometimes necessary to use SSH to log into a console window and make configuration changes. In 2.4, we've exposed all of these options via the web console. No more manually counting spaces after you edit a YAML file in VI. There's a list of common configuration tasks on the right, or you can simply search for the options that you need with the filter box here. And there are all the configuration options with the word firewall in them. If you want to make a change, you just enter it in a web form and it's automatically pushed to the entire grid in a matter of minutes. The tools below the horizontal line on the left-hand side are outside software projects that we include as part of Security Onion. Kibana, of course, is the standard reporting and visualization tool that comes from Elastic. The next two entries, Elastic Fleet and OS Query Manager, are for interacting with and configuring the Elastic agents that you've deployed in your environment. InfluxDB is an operational monitoring component that tracks things like disk usage and CPU utilization, so you can make sure that your grid is healthy. CyberChef, which we'll demonstrate shortly, is a Swiss Army knife for encoding and decoding data. And finally, Playbook and Attack Navigator go together, allowing you to write detections in the Sigma meta language and track how well those detections cover the various techniques in the Enterprise MITRE attack matrix. Now that we know what all the tools are, let's take a look at how they work together. We're going to be demonstrating an alert-driven investigation, so let's start by clicking on the link for the Alerts console. In the upper right corner of the screen, you see the time selector, where you can configure the time period for which you want to view alerts, either relatively, as in the last 24 hours, or absolutely, as in last Thursday from 2 to 4 p.m. By default, the alerts themselves are listed below and grouped by the name of the alert and the component that generated it, along with the severity of the alert according to the rule. In this case, I see that there are multiple alerts for Golang slash Sandcat plugin activity. So let's take a look at that alert. We can drill down by clicking on the count attribute to see if these are all being generated by the same client and server. Scrolling through the alerts here, these all seem to be between the same source and destination IP and port. The source port is remaining constant, which to me looks a little odd and might be beaconing or C2 behavior. This merits a deeper look, so I'm going to click on the triangle icon here to escalate one of these alerts into cases and start building a record of investigation. As you can see, escalating that Sandcat alert has opened a new case which by default has the name of the escalated alert. This can be changed to whatever matches your internal record keeping standards. If we open the case itself, you'll see that there are several different sets of information contained within the case, including markdown formatted comments on this tab, as well as a list of the events from within Security Onion that have been copied into the case as evidence. Because we just opened this case by promoting a single alert event, that's the one that's listed here. All of the attributes of this event have been copied into the case as part of the record of the investigation. Another component of a case in Security Onion is what we call observables, which are individual artifacts or indicators of compromise that can be recorded and then used in the future for writing detections or further threat hunting. In this case, since the alert we escalated contains source and destination IPs, those have been extracted from the event data and, and added as observables here in our case. Now that they're listed as observables, we can use this crosshairs icon to launch a new hunt for the other occurrences in our environment, or we can use the lightning bolt icon to enrich our case with data from analyzers. Analyzers are plugins for third-party services that can look up an observable and return data. For example, this built-in Spamhouse analyzer will look up an IP in the public Spamhouse API and tell us whether it's malicious. Security Onion ships with about a dozen analyzers by default, and we've got documentation available to help you write your own for internal or commercial services that you use in your environment. Now that we've opened a case to record our findings, let's go back to the Alerts tab and continue our investigation. Because this looks like C2 or beaconing behavior, it would be helpful to see what the traffic actually looks like. Fortunately, Security Onion has packet capture capabilities, so we can look at individual network flows and see the byte-by-byte -byte data that was being transferred.
At first glance, this traffic appears to be encrypted or obfuscated somehow. At the bottom is a string ending in an equal sign. That looks a lot like Base64 encoding to me. Fortunately, Security Onion includes CyberChef, which is an excellent web-based tool for encoding and decoding data, including Base64. It's actually integrated into the platform so seamlessly that we can pivot to it directly from this PCAP screen and decode this payload. The data from the PCAP is in the upper right pane of the window, the input box. We just need to tell CyberChef to apply a Base64 decoder to it, and we should see the content down below in output. And there we have it. Since this payload was only encoded and not encrypted, we're able to easily decode it and read its contents. Among other things, we see a file name, updater.exe. Since we're ingesting endpoint logs into Security Onion as well as the network logs that we've been looking at so far, let's search for that file name and see what we find. First, we'll copy it to the clipboard. Then we'll return to our Security Onion console. And we'll open up a fresh hunt tab to search for updater.exe in our logs. As we learned earlier, this is the hunt interface, which is the component of Security Onion that's designed to empower security analysts to sort, stack, and dig through all the data collected by the platform. In this case, we're telling Hunt to return all of the data it has that contains the string updater.exe, and then group those hits together by what sort of event it is. We can see here that there are a lot of sysmon logs, that is, endpoint logs, that reference this file name. If we group by this event action field, we can see what subclass of logs those are. It looks like we have some process creation and network connection logs, which stands to reason. We think this software is a beacon, so we would expect it to reach out to the C2 server every so often. There's also a file creation event, which is interesting because that should tell us where updater.exe came from. We can focus our query just on that event by clicking File Created and Include, and now you see there's just one event listed at the bottom. If we open up the details and we scroll down to Message to get the full log entry, here's all the information about the file creation event. Looks like the file c slash user slash public slash updater.exe was written to disk by c slash users slash mbishop slash download slash cat.exe. So it's probably a second stage from a Trojan that was downloaded by this user. Let's add this file creation event to our case. Now that we know where updater.exe came from, Let's see if we can figure out how cat.exe ended up on that Windows endpoint. Again, we're doing a search in Security Onion for anything with cat.exe contained with it, and we've got a mix of Windows endpoint logs and also some network logs here. In particular, this Zeek HTTP metadata log looks interesting. That indicates that cat.exe is contained within the metadata for an HTTP flow that was observed by our Security Onion instance. Let's focus on that one in particular. We see right here that it's the same source IP and destination IP that we saw in the initial alert, so it looks like we're on the right track. If we open up the event to see the details, it looks like this user connected via their web browser to vorpal.jabberwocky.org, requested slash temp slash cat.exe, and was served a DOS executable. Let's add this event to our case as well. It seems to be the initial point of infection. Let's also add that domain name, vorpal.jabberwocky.org, as an observable in our case. It's a domain. We'll hit add. And there it is on our list of observables. That will help us find other endpoints in the environment that might be reaching out to that domain, as well as helping us to build the detection for it later. Another piece of pivot functionality in Security Onion is correlation. The disparate logs are often tied together using metadata so you can pull them together to see all the different data about the same flow. If we do that with this HTTP log, we can also get additional information about the connection and the file or files that were exchanged.
In this file metadata record, we'll see information about the actual cat.exe file. This includes things like file hashes. Let's add this event to the case as well. We may be able to find the second stage, updater.exe, in these records as well. Let's see if there were any other DOS executables downloaded from this IP. So now we're searching for Zeek file from this source IP with the MIME type DOS exec. And now you see we have two file records instead of just one. That smaller 26 kilobyte file is the cat.exe that we saw before. This larger 6 megabyte file is most likely the second stage that was saved as updater.exe. Let's save this in our case as well. Now looking at the details, we see the original file name is sancat.go windows, which matches the alert that we started with. Also, we've got the MD5 and SHA-1 hashes of the file here. We can pivot from these into a lookup service like VirusTotal to confirm whether this file is recognized as malicious. While VirusTotal is included on this menu by default, I just want to mention that this is fully customizable if you have some other API-driven service in your environment that you'd like to use for these sorts of lookups. And there we go. A majority of antivirus vendors have classified this file as malicious. So let's take a moment to summarize what we've discovered so far. We started with an alert that an endpoint on our network was generating traffic consistent with a SANCAT implant beacon. We investigated, discovered that the traffic was being generated by a program called updater.exe on the endpoint system, and that updater.exe was a second stage payload that was written by cat.exe, which our user downloaded via a web browser connection to vorpal.jabberwocky.org and then executed from the download directory. We confirmed with VirusTotal that updater.exe is a SANCAT implant, and we saved all of this information from the investigation in case management so we can refer to it later. Now that we know where this malicious software comes from, we can use the endpoint logs to see what else it did on the endpoint besides generating that beacon traffic. For that, we're going to use our dashboards tool. Dashboards is a visualization component in Security Onion that allows the analyst to quickly model data collected by the platform. There are many built-in dashboards in the platform. The one we're going to use is Host Process Activity. Clicking on this will populate all of the graphs and visualizations below with data that's been generated and stored in Security Onion. Now, since we're looking for processes that were launched by updater.exe, we want to find that file listed under Parent Process Executable. That graph is near the bottom of the screen. Once we find that, we can click on it and use include to limit the results in these visualizations to processes whose parent is named updater.exe. Now that these graphs and charts have updated, you'll notice a few things. First, the only computer where this updater.exe file is listed as a parent process is mbishop-win10, which is the endpoint that we've been investigating. That's good news. It means that this is not running in the background on some other endpoint, the scope of our incident response right now is just this one computer. Second, you'll notice that it's only running under mbishop's account. There's not a service account or anything that's been hijacked to run it, which again is a good sign that cleanup of this malware shouldn't be too involved. Finally, all of the process executable events are PowerShell, so it looks like updater.exe has kicked off a bunch of PowerShell commands. Fortunately, since we've instrumented our endpoint to capture and forward sysmon and PowerShell logs, we should have everything we need. Scrolling down, you'll see that process.commandline actually lists all of the PowerShell commands that were executed by updater.exe. If we want to see them in order, we can actually add a timestamp column to this graph and sort them that way. It looks like this PowerShell recursed through C slash users directory hunting for ping, YAML, and WAV files, did some other reconnaissance, copied those files into C slash users slash mbishop slash download slash staged, compressed that folder into a zip file, uploaded it, and then deleted the zip file. Now, if we saw malicious activity like this and only had the endpoint logs to go on, we might have trouble confirming exactly what was exfiltrated. But fortunately, Security Onion includes complete packet capture, 
So we should be able to find that file in the recorded traffic and verify what's inside. We'll do this from within the HTTP dashboard. Much like the host process dashboard, this is a summary of all the HTTP traffic that we've seen on the network. We know from the PowerShell command that this file was uploaded to 12.12.12.122, port 8888. So let's adjust the dashboard to only view data related to that server. It quickly becomes evident that there are three URIs on this web server that have seen contact from within our network. Beacon, file slash download, and file slash upload. Let's concentrate on upload. And now, at the bottom of the screen, we have one HTTP metadata record, a post from 192.168.1.108 to 12.12.12.122, port 8888, with a body length of about 32 kilobytes. We can click on this event and then pivot to the corresponding PCAP. And we see something that definitely looks like a file named stage.zip. The adversary deleted it from the endpoint where it was gathered and exfiltrated, but we've got a copy of it here in the packet capture. There are a couple of options from here. The PCAP interface and security on will allow you to download the capture as a raw file, and you can then review it in something like Wireshark or Network Miner, both of which, incidentally, are included in the security on desktop installation that I'm using. Or, you can use this toast icon to send the capture into CyberChef and analyze it from there. As you can see, there's a hex dump of the packet capture in the input plane, and then some header information and a binary blob in the output. We want to start by extracting the files, so we'll have CyberChef do that for us. We can just add an extract files step to the recipe in the middle pane. We want to check the contents of the full zip file, so we can just use the arrow icon on the far right to turn the first of these zip artifacts into the input for the next round of analysis. Now, we can clear the recipe and unzip the files in that binary blob. And there you have it. In the output window, there's a list of the files that were contained within that zip that we pulled from the packet capture. We can even render the ping file if we want to. To summarize, we began with an alert about potential C2 traffic detected by Security Onion. From there, using a combination of endpoint logs and monitored network traffic, we were able to determine what that C2 implant was, how it ended up on the user's workstation, confirm the web server that it came from, check its hash to confirm that it was known malicious software, determine the other processes that it kicked off on the endpoint, and foil the adversary's attempts to cover their tracks by recovering the deleted staging file from the exfiltration traffic itself. Now. To close the incident response process on this event, we want to build a detection that will fire an alert the next time this first stage file is downloaded again. There are a few different IOCs that we could use, but for this example, let's start with the domain name that it was downloaded from. If anyone on my network does a DNS lookup for vorpal.jabberwocky.org, I would like that to be flagged and my analyst to be alerted. To quickly build an alert in Security Onion, we can use the Playbook tool. Playbook allows analysts to write detection rules in the platform agnostic Sigma meta language. Those rules are then compiled into Elasticsearch queries, which run automatically every few minutes and generate an alert if the query returns any hits. By default, Playbook is preloaded with detection rules for Windows endpoints from a public community repository. They're tremendously useful for spotting potential malicious activity from Sysmon and other event logs. Check our documentation for more details on what's included and how to add other rule sets to your playbook installation. We want to create a new play, so let's click on that first. I've already written this rule in advance and I'm going to paste it in now, then explain how it works. As you can see, there are some fields at the top for things like the title of the rule, the description, and the author. Then we declare what data we're using for this, which is our Zeek DNS metadata records, and the detection itself. If there is a DNS log which contains a dns.query.name field that matches the fqdn of vorpal.jabberwocky.org, 
we want to raise a high priority alert. That's the level field at the bottom. We can click the convert button at the bottom to see what the query will look like converted into Elastic Query Language. If everything looks good, we can click on Create Play from Sigma and it will generate a play for us. Now please note that by default, the play is in draft mode. We need to change its status to active for the query to go live and start generating alerts. Now, if any endpoint on our network queries that domain name from this point forward, we'll get an immediate alert in Security Onion to investigate. We can write these plays to trigger for anything in Security Onion, whether those IOCs come from network or endpoint data. It's a very powerful tool to allow your analysts to write detections from the results of their investigations. In addition to this alert investigation workflow, Security Onion is also designed for speedy, flexible ad hoc threat hunting to support analysts looking for previously unknown threats. Hunt and dashboards in particular can be excellent starting points for looking for unusual or anomalous behavior in your environment. Let's start a hunt with a simple hypothesis, that adversaries may attempt to hide their traffic by using non-standard ports to transport data. In order to test this hypothesis, we'll begin with the HTTP dashboard. Here's the main dashboard screen. Now let's select the HTTP specific one. To check our hypothesis, we'll need to remove the port 80 logs from the dashboard view, which we can do by scrolling down to the destination port table, selecting 80, and then exclude. All the visualizations have updated to take this change into account. Now, almost all of the virtual hosts are raw IP addresses rather than domain names, which seems a bit suspicious. I noticed that a lot of the traffic is also destined for port 443, which is usually reserved for HTTPS traffic and might be a sign of an intruder trying to avoid egress filtering. Scrolling down to the URIs that are requested, I noticed that some of them seem to have desktop machine names encoded in them. This seems like something worth investigating, so I'll narrow my search to one of those. Now, I can see that all the traffic to this URI has the same destination virtual host. Let's pivot a little bit and just see all the traffic to that host, not necessarily to this URI. So I've included that virtual host in my query and removed the URI, which means I should see all traffic destined for 203.176.135.102 on port 8082. Scrolling down to the events at the bottom of the screen, this appears to be all post requests coming from different source IPs and ports with the same destination. If we sort by request body length, we'll see that some of these are much larger than others. From here, we can pivot to PCAP and see what exactly this client is sending out to the web server. Well, this appears to be a process list and some other inventory information about this endpoint. Since this is being sent over a non-standard channel to an off-site IP address, it seems likely that this is malicious and that someone is attempting to gather reconnaissance information about the endpoints in our network. These endpoints sending data should all be taken offline and re-imaged. Let's pivot to Hunt and look for other information that we might have on this source IP. That might help us find the original point of compromise. If this is infected with something, a good place to start might be with the files that the endpoint has downloaded. There are all of the files that have been transmitted in plain text. Let's group them all by MIME type to find anything that looks like it might be suspicious or a potential source of infection. It looks like this endpoint has downloaded three executable files as well as a zip file in the last 24 hours, any of which could be an issue. Let's look at the executables first. It looks like the client has downloaded two executable files named borov.borov and update.update, .update, which definitely seem like suspicious names, as well as a third executable whose name isn't listed here. Thanks to the file carving capability built into the platform, both of these executables have been saved on the sensor's local disk so we can do further analysis on them, like detonating in a local sandbox or submitting to VirusTotal. We can also correlate on one of these records to get more information about where it came from. 
Looks like this file in particular came from a website called fedattack.live. From here we can check Zeek records to determine if any other endpoints on our network have attempted to contact that site, as well as pulling up the hash values of the files themselves to hunt for elsewhere in the environment. In the end, all of this activity can be recorded in cases, as with the alert investigation example earlier, and then used as a launch point for future hunts, as well as a source of IOCs for further detection engineering. I hope you found this video useful, and that you understand how Security Onion can ingest both live network traffic and log data to give analysts visibility into everything that's happening on an enterprise network, along with the tools to investigate alerts and hunt for unknown threats. I would encourage you to spin up a Security Onion instance yourself, either on your own hardware or in your favorite cloud provider, to get some hands-on experience with the platform and see how easy it is to use. If you're interested in Security Onion appliances, you can get more information at securityonion.com slash hardware. If you would like to hear more about our paid training offerings, there is information at securityonion.com slash training about both our on-demand and instructor-led options. And if you'd like more information about our support and professional services, you can get that at securityonion.com slash support. Thanks for watching and have a great day.